What's poppin'? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lady Nika, and with last night's um, episode of Black and Crew New York, this was season six, episode three, Texas. Here I come. Now, we're going to do this review a little bit on a different side because this episode took us from New York to Texas back and forth. So, in effort to put it together so that it will be easier for me to explain it and easier for you to understand the review, we are going to group them, the New York cast and what they got going on. And then at the very end of the review, um, I will do what went on with Sky in Texas, okay? So we're going to do it that way. We're going to go on and get the New York folks on out the way, okay? New York. Donna tells the cast maid sitting in the damn on shop that she had her maid spray uh, in her puss. And uh, that's what she sprayed. You know, she last week she sprayed Mac, Maxwell's sister, Maxie, with the... Um, with the uh the mace well she had that can in her puss honey she had it on her panties and walt said he knew something was up because donna never wears panties girl oh these people then that girl from the party that walt had hired with no right arrives and uh melody won't wasn't really feeling walt had hired her but instead of instead of her saying to the young lady you know I, at this time, we are not looking for a receptionist. I don't know why he told you that he could even hire you when I'm the shop's manager, but right now we're not taking applications. But you could check back, you know, in a couple of weeks, and maybe we will be. But at this time, no, that's the professional way to do it. No, instead of Melanie doing it that way, Melody decides that she's going to create this list of things that are supposedly needed is needed around the shop gives the girl the impression that she has this job and send her to the store only to lock the door when the girl leaves and i really did not like that in mail because i feel like she better than that i wanted her to win and be uh, the manager of this shop because I felt like she was mature and she could bring a certain thing that was missing in there like some structure and now I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm rethinking my position on that because she's steady doing fuck shit type of things that I really don't care for. You know, you gotta, if you want these people in this, in this shop to see you as a friend, but as also their boss and to garner their respect, then you need to prove that the position that Seeds has entrusted you in is one that you are worthy of. And if you don't feel that you are worthy of that, then what your ass need to do is go back to being one of the tattoo artists in the shop. Because right now, you don't hold any favor in my book. I would get rid of you in a heartbeat if you worked for me. I don't like that. You don't treat, see, you don't play with people like that. You don't know how that girl is going to respond to returning back to that shop and basically being told you don't work here no more. You hired and fired her just that fast. When in actuality, you never really hired her in the first place. You lied to get her on the other side of that door instead of just being honest with her. And while you had no right to step outside of who you are and your position in that shop, whatever that may be, to, to hire somebody just because you're trying to get you a little cut on the side. And you probably ain't even getting nothing yet from this girl, but you got her down here to the TV looking real stupid. I didn't like that at all. That's not a boss move at all, you know. I I, I don't like that. C's go to the go back to that doctor he went to last week for his results of his STD testing, and he finds that he does have a disease. And did y'all see how panic and crazed he got? Now a lot of people say the doctor play games because the doctor told him he had a disease, but he gave him the scientific name of it instead of it being just a, what we would understand. The, I like to say the dummy version of a medical terminology, basically saying he has a urinary tract infection. But this nigga is so motherfucking scared because he didn't heard that he was testing positive that he's worried about now all the things he should have been worried about when he was doing the act of what he was doing. He worried about his image. He works around blood. If he got a disease, he may not be able to do that. He's a public figure. This can't get out. He worried about all that shit, and I hope that he remembers the next time he's about to lay with persuasion, nasty ass, or any of them other 
sock buckets that he liked to fuck with down in the ATL, that he remembers that moment when he was afraid and thought that he had actually caught something. The doctor ends up telling him that uh, with may with some meds and some cranberry juice, he'll be just fine. He just got to give his damn urethra a break, okay? Because the shit going crazy. Now, he relieved that, you know, that that that... That ain't what it is. It ain't nothing that that's that terrible. And he says that going forward, he's going to take the necessary precautions to make sure that he is safe and not put himself or anyone else at risk with his reckless behavior. And I said, yeah. So then when we get back to the shop, he tells the crew that he been thinking, you know. He been thinking. He might need to mend fences with his daughter's mom, Crystal. And Teddy say... That UTI done went to see his head because this is the same girl that done drug him in the court on child support nine different times, had him arrested six times, and other shit she has done to him. And he don't understand why he would want to have a meet up with, him, with her. And he's saying that he needs to make things, you know, as cordial or amicable between the two of them so that it will improve their co-parenting of, of his child. Basically, he's doing it for the sake of his child, and I can understand that. And they did meet up, and I seen her ass sitting there and look like a park or whatever talking to him. But, y'all, somebody knocked on my door, and I went to answer it, so I don't know what the fuck happened in that conversation. If y'all know or care to tell me put it in the panty we're gonna keep it moving melody girl your, your man come to the shop bearing uh flowers for you and tell you to come outside because he got a surprise for you and she's saying she need a surprise you know after she realized she fucked up them numbers and now she really do owe this the irs people's uh thirty thousand dollars she need a break so she come outside he tell her to stand right there and he goes around the corner and drives up in a fucking rv that look like it's from 1980s it look like one of them uh, rvs they used to be in that movie porkies and shit and he's telling her look since we in third we thirty thousand dollars in debt, I figured that we would sublet our apartment, not pay rent for a while to allow us to free up the money to be able to pay off this debt a little bit quicker. And I can understand why she ain't wanna be in no damn R V that damn old with a one year old because a one year old needs space to move around. They they be getting a walk thing on and that it's exciting to them because it's new and that's just not enough space for a child to be in and I, I wouldn't want to stay there either. However, I have to give him props because he's saying he, we in this together. When we both know, well, we all know, that marriage they had over there in, in Cabo or wherever the fuck they was when they had that, that wasn't a real marriage that they had. He's not technically indebted to the IRS. Her ass is. But it's nice that he's willing to help her out that situation and not abandon her on there and be like, bitch, you going to have to deal with that. It ain't got shit to do with me. You know, but I guess because they got shit in their name together, he could stand to lose. But that's her did really. But I mean, you know, like I said, it could be a situation where because it is in both their name, he could stand to lose as well. And she wasn't really trying to be in no damn RV with him like that. And uh, later on in the shop, uh, doing the episode in the shop, I think Donna asked what was up with that RV, and she kind of portrayed like it was just a romantic gesture that they was going to spend the night in it. Her and Lyle, uh, Lyle, or whatever her husband's name, or whatever that dude's name is. Anyway, she, she lying to him because see, she don't want them to know how, you know, what she got going on on the side. She don't want them to know that she done been caught up in this damn situation with the IRS and could stand to lose everything if she don't get on a payment plan with them and I was like a payment plan ought to be what help you because with this job here and then the fact we know she don't work at Black Ink for real she actually work at another shop and may have her own shop between her Black Ink coin and her coin she bringing in because she is getting exposure on this show you would think that she can make a payment plan that would allow her to stay in her house but child I, I ain't gonna go that deep with it because this is a TV show and I don't give a fuck but yeah she going to lie to them so because she don't want them, you know, critiquing her so harshly, continuously, and not respecting her. Then Alexander shows up into the club, uh, shop. He back, child. He got his gun. 
His 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 tattoo gun is now working. That girl that was there last week that said she would come back when the tattoo gun wasn't working is in there. And C's is saying, let your your next move be your best move. So he sends him off to go impress him with his tattoo. If he go back there, he back there for about an hour with the girl. When he comes back out, he presents his tattoo uh, to C's. And before C's could really even say anything, Miller didn't jump from behind the counter saying that, it, you know, it is running into another tattoo she has on her shoulder and it's not right and stuff like that. She critiqued it harshly. Um, in my opinion, it, you know, I'm spoiled because I watch Black Ink Crew Chicago. So, I, that's my opinion on it. I'm spoiled because I watch Black Ink Crew Chicago. So, in my opinion... That tattoo wasn't no better than Donna. I mean, it wasn't no worse than Donna ass over that tattoo in last season and this season. And Seeds was like, you know, this is her fault for not... Because she was ready to kick him out the shop and say, it's over with. You ain't, you know, you're not a qualified candidate. However, Seeds liked the dude, you can tell. And he wants to give him a chance. So he tells her that maybe she should be uh, his apprentice. So he wants to hire him in. Yeah, you can come on and work down here under Mel, and Mel is saying, hell to the now, I already wiped one nose a day, I'm not taking care of no other kid, and C said, well, considering that I own the shop, and I can veto this shit, what you saying, and if you don't like it, we can get somebody else in here to do your job, uh, you're going to do this, because this is what I want done, you should have done the necessary background to help, uh, to, before you brought him in here, and now that he here, He's your problem because I want you to train him because I see something in him. She is not feeling that shit. And Donna hit her with, well, if you can't do, if you can't handle being his, uh, you know, having him as an apprentice, then maybe you just not really ready to be the shop uh, uh, manager. And maybe Walt should have that job. And Alexander is like, well, damn, shawty, thank you. And Walt was sitting over there like, damn, all right now, what Donna all right, that's right, bitch. Each one teach one. She, we, we, we was fucking with you before we were fucking with her. And I, I was like, he telling the truth. You jumped up to go hire a tattoo artist that you didn't do any background on um, to find out if he was good with his work. I mean, I'm sure you probably saw a couple of good little pictures he did and put up on the Instagram. But you should have got some information about this boy prior to hiring him. And since you didn't, now he's your problem and you got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Now you got to deal with it. What you going to do? Quit? Girl, you $30,000 in debt with the IRS. Them, the three alphabets, you don't fuck with. They rank right up there with CIA, FBI. You don't fuck with them. Th them, 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 them letters there. Don't fuck with them letters. They can fuck your whole life up. Shit, they can make it like you never was here before. So don't fuck with that. So, you know, I think I pretty much covered <coughs> everything that happened down up in New York. Let's let's go on down to Texas, you know. Don't mess with Texas. And Sky and Allison is up boarding the plane to get ready to go and meet Candace and her two sons. And she's nervous and she excited. She don't know what to feel. And when she arrives at this woman's door, first of all, I can tell Sky is from up north because uh, you don't knock on no southern person, though. See, she ain't show her ass because uh, the cameras was there, and she was, a, you know, she probably watched the show a couple times and see how they dress. But, girl, that ain't how you do it down south. You don't just bust up in the motherfucker like that, especially when you call yourself coming to see your kids that you gave up at birth. You supposed to came in a more motherly, adult fashion. Girl, you came like you could be on the New York host stroll. I'm just saying. You know I love you. Mm -mm. But, anyway, um, she get there. The mama and the daughter is very happy to see her. They hugging each other. I thought that was nice. That's a cool ass white lady, Candace. Girl, you the kind down here that we fucks with. You the kind. Your kind now. Y'all come to the barbecue. Y'all can. She ran. She left Sky. Look around the house to see where the boys had grown grown up in. She showed her all the different family photos, different pictures of them at different ages, and then they sit down to have a conversation. And that's where she says to Sky, "I understand that you did the only thing that you thought that you could do to help your children. You provide. You made the ultimate sacrifice so that they could have a better life. And they really just touched Sky and broke her down because." 
that is what the situation was. If she could keep her kids, she would have kept her kids, but she couldn't keep her kids in and out of jail, in and out of shelters. A, a mother who is a drug addicted bipolar person. So how what well, you know, it was just not a it was not a conducive situation to be trying to raise children in and I totally understand that. So after that the lady goes on to say that, you know, the boys are up until both of the boys know about you. They love you and they've always wanted to meet you. Dad still feels that way. And he will be here shortly, but he's at football practice right now. He's excited about meeting you. However, Genesis, about a year and a half ago, his biological father came around. I felt like it was within, you know, it would be a good thing for him to be around him. So I allowed him to take him out, you know, and the boy ain't been the same. It's like he went from being kind of like this, excited, understanding, and ready to now he has a lot of anger and a lot of hate inside of him, and he don't want to have nothing to do with you. She says she hasn't seen him since June, but she would help Sky in any way try to have a meeting with this boy while she in Texas, and I, I respected that. Then Dez come home, and it's like, he ain't never been apart from her. They ran into each other's arms. It was the most beautiful moment. He looked just like his mama, too. And they go outside because she want to have a private moment with him and us. And because uh, we watching, you know, and she's saying she apologized. And she explaining where she was in the head and what her life was like and why she had to give him up. And do you know this boy was okay with that? He done reconciled it in his head. He just glad she's there. He wants to start from right now. And incorporate each, you know, incorporate themselves into each other's lives. He wants a relationship with his mother, and I said, "Yeah, that's this one. That other one's gonna be a different story." So, he invites her to come to his football game, which she goes. I said football, yeah, football game, which she goes to. And y'all know Scott Loud here, where she go? She, we find out he's obviously a very popular young man. On, on his at his school and the girls you know with the popularity come the girls and stuff so after everything is said and done Candace tells her I have been trying to reach Genesis and he hasn't been answering my call so she decided she was going to give it another try and she did and this time Genesis answers the phone and you can tell when he answers the phone he got a damn attitude He's saying he don't give a fuck. He don't want to see her. Even though Candace is saying your mom is here. She would like to meet you. I ain't interested in meeting her. And this little motherfucker I can tell. I understand being upset. But being disrespectful is a whole different thing. Candace ain't did nothing to your ass. But took you away from the life that you would have had. And gave you the best life that she knew how to. Which seems like a pretty good life if you ask me. So bitch if you don't respect nobody else. You need to be respecting her gonna hang up when the woman said I love you and and you know she told Sky you know he's saying he's not interested but I'm look don't get discouraged cuz I promise you he's only saying this shit because Alton is standing right there cuz apparently when she let him go spend time with Alton a year and a half ago that changes because this man has been feeding and feeding and feeding poison about Sky in this boy's head making him hate because how in the hell did he go from being willing and ready to meet her to now he hates her so badly and I have to side eye Alton because bitch when you came on this show a couple of seasons ago you sat at that table in that restaurant with that woman and she told you what the situation was and you told her that you understood she did the best thing that was possible for her and that for uh, her and the kids in that moment, and that you feel like you carried some of the responsibility too because your ass was out of town at job call. That's what you said. But now you done got with this boy and you've been feeding him shit against his mother. That's the only reason why he would change on her. And when they had that meeting, that meeting was the most, oh my God. Now, understand me. Well, i tell you at the end. Let me just tell you what happened. He gets there and you can tell immediately he don't want to be there. He got an attitude. He's sitting at the table. He grimacing. He getting madder and madder. That motherfucker eyes filling up with water. Of course, her eyes is filling with water because she's trying to explain to him what happened. 
and why she hasn't been there until now. She even went so far as to say, look, when I first got on this show, just because you were seeing me on this show don't mean I was getting paid like that. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Y'all see these people on these shows and you think they making so much money. Again, I keep telling you, they don't be making that damn much money. Now, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, those whores are making money. But these shows here... These little shows like that, they're not making that much per episode. It They have to be on there for a while before they be clocking dollars like Stevie and Jocelyn was. Stevie and Jocelyn made Love and Hip Hop. That's how come they started getting paid like they were. But do you honestly think season one she was paying that damn much? Nope. But when she seen that was her meal ticket, of course you're going to invest. You know? And he didn't want to hear any of it. He, he got so mad, he winded up knocking everything off the table at the restaurant, they, you know, restaurant table they were sitting there. And he acted like he was going to beat her ass. Security jumps in, and he was trying to handle them three little niggas. Now, I tell you, he is his mama's child because he was handling that shit. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't get... Don't gonna get it twisted. Them three big ass men that was on him, if they really wanted to hurt him and did not have respect for Sky, they would have tossed his ass up. Cause he might have he would have gave him a run for their money, but he'd have lost, okay? That's what I'm saying. He gets so mad, they separating them. Three on him, one on Sky, and she, all she can think about, not worried about him about to beat her motherfucking ass, just don't hurt my son. So the last scene took us to them putting her in the van and she breaking down crying. And he done took his shirt off walking across the street. He mad as hell. And did y'all notice that big figure that was walking across the street with him? That's that Alton motherfucker. I ain't got no respect for him. Now let me tell you how I feel about this before I get up out of here. That little boy got a lot of reason to be hurt because he feel abandoned. But what I don't appreciate is I don't appreciate for how this is coming across as if this man has... He basically poisoned this boy's mind against his mother. Why would you do that when we got on tape? We got evidence of you saying the exact opposite about her in her face on this show. That little boy had a right to be angry, but he ain't got no right to be fucking disrespectful like that. Because at the end of the day, you still a man, and that is your mother, and that's a woman. So, you better figure out how to... uh. Get, break up some of that anger or figure out how to get some of that anger out of you a different way because that ain't cool. That's the quickest way for your ass to go back and forth to jail like you've been going. I think he needs a lot of counseling and he needs a lot of love. I don't want Sky to give up on him but give him his faith if he needs it. Just stay there letting him know that whenever you're ready, I'm here for you. That's all she's going to be able to do. And hope that th that he gets some type of counseling to help him cope with what's going on with her re-entering his life. And that man ain't shit. That's how I feel about it. That's it. That's all. Remember the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video wherever it is you share videos. I'll see you guys back tomorrow for Vlogmas Day number 11. Peace.